people in the midst of it because of all that God has done for me. So this week we're going to talk about Thanksgiving in action. We're going to talk about walking out our Thanksgiving. Thankfully, we don't have to suffer like Paul has to, but many Christians around the world do. But we can still be thankful even in the little things that we do here. And why should we be thankful? Well, we have a Savior who died for us. We have a God who blesses us, even keeps dear from uh, hitting our cars. But apparently I wasn't praying that night, I hit mine. But, well, I was on the phone with my brother. He's distracting me. It's, uh, the, that his deer snaked out in front of him. It's not good. But the car's in the repair shop. Thank God for repair men that can make it back to what it was because I love my car. But there's thankfulness that we can have that thankfulness that, that, we, that we do have a God who loves us. We just sang that song. It's a beautiful way to end that service. It was good, good father. And, and it talks, and, and in that, Chris Tomlin talks about how, how our God is with us. That literally the name Emmanuel, meaning God with us, is walked out every day with the Holy Spirit that we, that we use in our daily lives. And, and so, but then there's a part where the writers feel that we need to take action with our thankfulness. That just as God has blessed us, we're called to bless others. And that's Thanksgiving in action. If you got your Bibles with us, you can turn with me uh, to Colossians 4, 5, and 6. And this is walking out, this verse is about walking out that we need to practice gratitude in our words. It says to live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Paul tells the church in Colossus that it's not enough just to serve God in the church house, that when you're out here and you're talking to your neighbor or you're talking to the grocery store manager, or all kinds of different people that we run across in our daily life. We have to be willing to be gracious and, and, and use our, our words not to hurt or to harm or to belittle, but to build people up, to let them know that we are happy that they're in our lives, that these are the people that we get to be around. But we're happy for the things that they do for us. We have to be able to let them know that we are the children of God through our actions. You know, the big theme about the Bible is is that we basically get the God that we portray to others. If we're judgmental of others, it says we'll get a judgmental God. But if we're kind and thankful to others, then it says that's a reflection on who the Father actually is. That's a scary thought. A God that treats me in many ways, as I would treat others. But we've all had families. We've all had parents. And many times our actions as children, as physical children, reflect many of the values that our parents put in us. So should we not reflect the values that our Heavenly Father puts in us? In fact, Paul says later on that 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 it's a a test of whether you truly are God's. That he feels that if he can't see that in you, that he he doesn't know that if you are the Father's. Because you're not able to reflect the Father's heart that he put in you when you were saved. The next one is we need to be able to perform acts of kindness. Not only must our words be seasoned with good, with good feelings and good and goodwill towards people, but we need to be able to perform acts of kindness. In Ephesians, he says, "Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you." He brings it up again. 
I've forgiven you, go out and forgive others. He did a, Jesus, when he was on this earth, did a parable about, about, the, about the servant who couldn't forgive another servant for, for uh, $100 that he owed him, and yet God had forgiven him for a million. And he said, throw him in jail until he's paid every bit of it back. To the, the, he says, he says I, I'm going to make him hold him for that million because he tried to throw that guy in jail for the hundred that he owed him. He said, I've forgiven you so much. Forgive others. Show people that. Show people who I am. If there's forgiveness for you, there's forg- you should have forgiveness for others. And that's hard. Because we've all had cases where we've been mistreated. We've all had cases where people have not done right by us. But it says that if we have forgiveness from the Father for what we do, we can have forgiveness towards others for what they do. See, the good news about that, the good news or bad news, as you want to see, is that God sees the heart in all of it. We don't have that benefit. When somebody harms us, we don't have that benefit to be able to see what their heart is. We, we don't know their story, as, as is popularly said. We don't know why they're acting that way. Whether it was bad raising in their physical households, or, or whether they've had a bad day. But, but see, when God forgives us, He sees every part of that. He sees all the things that are boiling up inside of us. And sometimes it's just because we're just feeling mean that moment. I mean, I, I think if you'll be honest, we, we, sometimes we... Uh, uh, I don't want to say that. <laughs> Editing on the fly here, people. I'm sorry. But, but sometimes it's just because we just decided that we, we were jealous of that person. And so we said something mean. And yet God says he will forgive us. So we should forgive others. Paul also recognized that dichotomy that's in us. That, that, that we can be saved by Christ. That we can be forgiven of so much. And yet we can still do the things that we don't want to do. But that also means that doing good is a choice as well. And that we have the choice to do well. Why else would Paul be telling us to be kind to our neighbors, to to look like Christ in our actions towards our neighbors? The next way is that we need to prioritize generosity. I heard you groan. You're sitting here saying, oh no, now he's going to talk to us about giving to the church. No, I'm talking about prioritizing generosity. I want to, I want to read this story to you. It talks about a blind boy who sat on the steps of a building with a hat by his feet. He held up a sign which read, I am blind, please help. And there were only a few coins in the hat. Spare change from folks as they hurried past. A man was walking by and he took a few coins from his pocket and dropped them into the hat. He then took the sign, turned it around, and wrote some words. Then he put the sign back in the boy's hand so that everyone who walked by would now see the new words. Soon the hat began to fill up. A lot more people were giving money to the blind boy. And that afternoon, the man who had changed the sign returned to see how things were. And the boy recognized his footsteps and said, Were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? The man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but in a different way. I wrote, today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Both signs spoke the truth. The first said that the boy was blind, while the second said that they need to walk and how grateful that they are to have their sight. He couldn't help it, he was blind. But some people can see and they still can't see. Sorry, there's... uh, ladybugs but but some people can see but they still can't see how grateful that they should be if you if you've got your sight today wow that's an amazing thing if you've got your family with you that's another amazing thing there can be so much to be grateful that we can miss it because for us it's just become our ordinary life our, our things around us are are We're surrounded by the things that we have. So Paul again talks about that we need to be generous. 
that we need to, to show forth our blessings. It says in 2 Corinthians 9, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide you all you need. Then you will have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. And as the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. He talks about that as we have our abundance in what we've sown in God, that we need to look for those that we can help. It's not meant to compile up and to, to make a, to, to, to continue to keep score by how much that bank account says. No, we've been blessed to be able to share with others. We've been blessed to be able to open our pockets. I have a lady that comes to the hospital a lot and she, uh, she needs, I think it's, is it insure? It may be insure. It's one of the, the, the mix, the, uh, the pre uh, drinks that has everything in it. Um, and she has it for a granddaughter that can't, that can't eat texture. She won't eat texture. Uh, she, she just, uh, so she drinks, that's all this granddaughter drinks. And I, a part, there's a cynical side of me, and I think I've talked about this before, that, that, believe, that doesn't know, because I used to give money, and, and, and now I've been given insurers. But there's a cynical side inside of me that says, what if she's just taking that money over here to the one of five gambling places between our hospital and, the, and, the, uh, uh, and Broadway? I, three blocks, there's that many gambling places. Anyways, another thing. Um, but I said, what if she's doing that? What if that's what she's doing? And no, when I switched to the insurer, she came and got the insurer, thankful that we, because I usually buy, big, I bought the big thing of insurer. And she said, thankful that we have insurer f- to give her, for her, her granddaughter. It's not insurer, it's the other one. I can't think what it is. Anyways, I didn't know I was going to tell that story. Uh, the, <laughs> Boost, yes, it boosts. Thank you, but but anyway, she's she's grateful for that boost that we give every week, every month, because it gets down to the end of the month and the dollar doesn't go as far as it used to anymore. But she's grateful. She told me that many times. She's just grateful that 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 that, that we can provide something. And, and you know, shame on me for my cynical nature. Shame on me for judging everybody by the actions of people before her. we called to be generous. We're not called to be generous for generosity's sake. We're called to be generous because our Heavenly Father has blessed us and given us the ability to help others. Each in their kind. He, he's saying if, if you've been blessed with a little bit, share from that little bit. If you've been blessed with a lot, share more. He's called us to look like Him. God who gives freely to us. That's a hard message these days. Because, you know, in the face of a culture that says that the church is always trying to, trying to pile up their money and, and, and never give out. God told, tells us to be generous as He is generous. I'm grateful. We're getting ready to give away a lot of money this Christmas. We, we just had a meeting about it last week. And, and we, we give out a lot of money during Christmas time to various needs around the community. We, we, we clear out some of the, some of the uh, debts down here at the school. We give towards people's electrical bill and gas bill up here at the village. We, we try to we share what we have in, the, in the, our abundance in this church with our community that surrounds us. We don't want people saying that there's those people that go in the four walls and nobody ever sees anything come out of it. No, we want to share outside the community. It's why we do the drive th- through Thanksgiving. It's why, it's why we want to bless those around us. God has blessed us, so we give out of our abundance to help others. Last way that we can have a life of gratitude is to continually give thanks. 
Do you know people that look for things to give thanks about? They're some of the happiest people on earth. I've got this guy at work, and, and <laughs> I almost don't even like to get on the elevator with him because he convicts me because I'm not thankful enough. You ever meet somebody like that? You, you'll say, hey, how you doing today, Ray? And he says, well, I'm just thankful to be breathing. I'm up and at him here with you all and, and, you know, just happy and zippy. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm the chaplain. And I'm not this happy. I feel bad, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he's just, he's excited. He works down in our EVS, which is, which is the people that clean the rooms and stuff. He runs, their, he runs that office. And I bet you, I guarantee you the reason that he runs it is because he is so happy. And he can give his, his positive experience to the people that are going to go clean the rooms. He says, I'm just glad to have my people. They're doing good, and we're going to make it through today. And, you know, and you're just sitting there like, amen, amen. Continuously give thanks. I see that about Dave. He's, he's a person that continuously gives thanks because he's never got a bad word to say. First Thessalonians, it says, Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Look at, and, and interestingly enough, he brings up Christ Jesus at the end. And, and what did, did Christ Jesus, come on, did Christ Jesus blame the people that were crucifying him? No. I think one of the most powerful moments in the passion of the Christ, and I, I saw this again, is they were going to stop beating him, and he stood up anyways. He stood back up to receive more lashes. But that's who he was. He knew what he was doing. He was thankful that he got to shed blood for us. Even though he didn't want to, he was still thankful. He was thankful in his circumstances. Everything you read in that, he, he, was, he, was, he was able to be gracious with the thief who had made fun of him not, not a little bit before. He, he, was able, he, he was able to look out and see his mother standing there by herself. And he looks over to John and says, John, behold your mother. Your mother, behold your new son. So he calls us to be in the vein of Jesus. And that's really hard to be and be a sourpuss. They're going to sing a song about being thankful here to close us out. And then I want to come up and pray for y'all. Thankfully, those who went before us, they were thankfully gathering together to thankfully great. with the heritage to gratefully celebrate together and gratefully thankfully Gratefully, we can gratefully be 
All throughout the year we pray for thee, thankfully rejoice. Let us gather now and be grateful now. Let's be thankful now together. Stand with me. So next week, we're going to have our Christmas communion service. But before we do that, we're going to be doing a, uh, uh, I want to take time to be thankful. We're going to, ta we're going to talk about our blessings and Thanksgiving. Uh, so I'm going to give everybody a chance to be able to talk, talk about what you're thankful for after you've had this opportunity to celebrate with your families and everything. And, and we're just going to take that time to be thankful. I'm not going to record next week's service. It's going to be, we're going to keep that private. That'll just be for the people that are here. So, so what you say, it doesn't have to go beyond these four walls. But, but we're just going to take that time to be thankful in our season of thankfulness. I want to end Thanksgiving well, and then w w the following week, we're going to go ahead and we're going to launch into Christmas. And, and we're going to celebrate what, what, what we as Christians are really thankful for that there's 2,000 years ago, our Savior came to this earth to die for our sins. Let's take a moment and just pray with me. Father God, we're just thankful that we get this opportunity to show the gratitude that we have in our hearts for you being our Savior. That because you live in us, we can live our lives out in front of people with the gratitude and the abilities that you've given us. I just ask that you'd be with everybody here today. I, I ask you to let them be th thermostats and not thermometers. Father God, that they won't be telling the temperature of the room, but they'll be doing something about it. Inspiring hearts to be thankful in their many uh, gatherings that they're going to be attending, Father God. And I, I just ask that you would just be peace in their households. And, and, and Father, that, that, that let us come out of this season with a thankful heart. I ask you to go with them, be with them, lead them, guide them, and direct them in all their paths. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving.